Hello everyone, back to you into today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. In today's fur video, we're going to uh, see what the GFS, the ECM and the GEM models are showing as we go through the first week of August. So, it's been very, very hot through this summer, of course, so far. Um, we're up there with the very hottest summers on record right now. Also been very dry as well. Um, up there with the driest summers on record too. Brief respite at the moment. So uh, we broke the heat wave and the drought yesterday in quite a lot of places with violent thunderstorms. Um, and now we're in a different regime in terms of the air mass. We're in an Atlantic regime. It's cooler. It's fresher. And tomorrow we'll actually have, which we'll actually have some classic sort of wet and windy weather, which is something we haven't had for a very, very long time. It will be a bit of a talking point, actually, to get some wind and rain from off the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but it is only a respite. So by the time we get through to the second half of the coming week, it's going to get hotter again. The Azores High will start to get its reach going to the Scandinavian High once more. And so by this time next week, I think we'll be back to 30 degrees, 86 uh, Fahrenheit again in the south. And then how hot it's going to get as we go further on through the first week of August is some uncertainty about that potentially it could get very hot um uh, once more so if you enjoy cooler weather i'll make the most of the next few days because uh, i think we're going back into some pretty uh, high temperatures again in around a week's time i'll talk for everything that's going on we have released a weekend forecast so it covers the period up to next weekend anyway check that out on the uh, weather forecast of the week ahead page and also earlier on today we released the season model roundup for the autumn I've done, um two of those so far it's second season model, seasonal model roundup for the autumn of 2018 it's the video is here on the home page right now scroll down and you'll find it above the pond account later it will be placed on the autumn updates forecast page with a written summary to go with it as well uh, before we get on with the video, though, just going to say a big thank you and give a shout out to our latest uh, patron. So, um, Simon Rossi has become Gazwave's 25th patron. Uh, I've only been running this for a little bit over a month, or probably six weeks, and we're already up to 25 patrons for Gazwave. So, a big thank you to patron number 25, Simon Rossi. Big thank you to all of the patrons uh, for Gaz Weathervid. So this is helping to fund the website. It's a uh, page um, at Patreon that helps us to fund Gaz Weathervid. If you'd like to become a patron for Gaz Weathervid and give an ongoing uh, monthly donation, then you just come to the Gaz Weathervid's Patreon page. You pledge whatever uh, amount of money you would like to give us on a monthly uh, basis to be anything as little as one dollar a month and upwards so um by doing that you become a patron for gas this you'll get a mention and a shout out and a thank you in the video just as simon has uh done unless you would rather not have a mention uh so a few people have chosen to stay anonymous or maybe you would like a mention for your uh website or organization we've done that for um a couple of people as well so that's perfectly fine if you would like not to have a mention for your name but for your uh sort of business or website we don't mind doing that um and if you'd like to stay anonymous just leave a little note uh and tell us uh that you would rather stay anonymous we'll just give a shout out to uh this anonymous person and that's perfectly Perfectly fine as well. So a big thank you to all of the patrons for Gazwell VC. It is helping us to keep content completely free of charge at the point that you will want it. We are primarily ads funded uh, and will be remaining so nothing will be changing in terms of the content being freely available. We won't be going behind paywalls or anything like that. We just ask if you can afford to give us a donation and become a patron of Gazovids, then uh, please uh, do that. And uh, thanks very much to Simon. Thanks very much to all of the patrons for Gazovids. Right, we'll start off having a look at the 500 millimetre height anomaly flowcharts from the Penn State University. We've got the ECMDF here on the top, and the GFS, which have a look at in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millimetre, 8,000 feet is an area in the atmosphere where high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red and orange extrapolates high pressure, blue to low pressure. These are the mean flow charts for the 7 to 10 day time frame, which takes us towards the end of the first week of August. 
So the ECM to the Earth has this ridge of above average heights close to the UK and also extending out into the Atlantic. There's a little bit more influence from the jet stream up to the north. Uh, but nevertheless, basically, we're back under high pressure conditions, back under anticyclonic weather and probably drawing up some very warm air, if not hot air, from the south uh, once again. And then this is how the uh, GFS is looking. It's very similar, but if anything, it's perhaps a little bit stronger with that ridge from the Azores and going up to the Scandinavian heights, so a big ridge uh, up there with below average heights around Greenland and Iceland. The jet stream is in that sort of position where it's been all summer. So on the hot side of the jet, warm side of the jet, one of the ridge of high pressure, if that comes off, it is going to be uh, very warm. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Lincoln uh, today, and they got hit very badly, by the way, by uh, thunderstorms yesterday in Lincolnshire. So the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for, uh, for Lincoln. We can see that at the moment we've got a little bit cooler than average, would you believe? A little bit below average with the upper air temperatures. And generally through to the start of next week, staying quite cool. We do get a little tick up in the temperature there tomorrow. It's associated with an active area of low pressure, so you won't particularly feel that lift up in the temperature. It's just a warm sector that's coming in with quite a deep area of low pressure. We'll be bringing, as I said, start a video, um, our first bout of classically wet and windy Atlantic weather that we've had for a very long time. So let's say the next three to four days, a little bit cooler than average, except for that uh, short brief interlude where it goes warmer than average with the warm sector with tomorrow's area of low pressure. For around the middle of the coming week, we're going to find the temperatures lifting back up and then it looks like we're off and running into another spell of warmer than average where again the red line is a 30 year temperature average so above average for quite a prolonged period from the middle of the coming week how above average is it going to go though that is the uncertainty because we have got several ensemble members here but are going very very hot indeed they're above 15 celsius at 850 HPA, that green one is actually going to around 20 degrees at 850 HPA. It's an outlier. It's not supported by the ensemble mean or really by any other ensemble member. But if it did come off, it would be getting temperatures close to 100 Fahrenheit. More generally, though, most of the ensemble members are at the very least somewhat warmer than average. So it implies temperatures going back to around 30 degrees. Remember, it's been a hot and dry summer, so it's not going to take much at all in terms of the upper air temperatures to get those temperatures back to 30 degrees. Uh, we won't have to go particularly uh, hotter than average with the upper air temperatures to go uh, to 30 degrees down on the surface, purely because the ground is so dry, it's so hot and baked, that uh, very quickly we will lift the temperature back up again. Uh, these hottest summers do tend to have a feedback loop that goes on, uh, that the hotter and drier it gets, so the hotter and drier it will become, until eventually we will get to like the end of August, and then that sun will just start to lose so much of its energy by the time we get into the second half of August, that it will start to become more and more difficult to sustain temperatures of 30 degrees and above, unless we have a very hot upper air temperature uh, from late September, from late August into September, it becomes much more difficult to sustain 30 degree uh, heat. But of course, you can get 30 degree heat in September. Many Septembers do that. And in fact, in 1906, on the first day of September, we got uh, temperatures up to 35 degrees. So you can get some very exceptional heat in, even in September, despite the late lateness of the year. But the further on we go, of course, the harder it becomes. But at the moment, no such problems. We're still in the middle of the summer, uh, really. And it's been very hot and dry, so very quickly we will be able to get those temperatures back to 30 degrees as soon as the high pressure comes back. Uh, in terms of precipitation, so that's tomorrow's rainfall. Looking quite a wet uh, sort of spell coming up tomorrow, actually. But after that, generally a lot of dry weather. Not totally dry. There's little precipitation spikes coming through. So some showers occasionally are possible. Maybe a more 
definitively a sort of showery period bear around the 8th of August. But to be honest, once we get tomorrow's wet weather out of the way, it is looking pretty dry then through uh, certainly the next week to 10 days. Service temperature-wise at Lincoln, remember these undercut temperatures a little bit, but that's 30 degrees just there that's 20 degrees so it's suggesting maximums over the next few days of around 20 uh, degrees but through next week particularly the second half of next week into next weekend there's a temperature lifting back up it's going into the mid 20 celsius but actually i think we'll be closer to 30 degrees uh if it verifies and then staying pretty warm as we go through into the second week of august actually which is that period uh just there Temperature anomalies for the week ahead from the 28th of July to 5th of August are coming out a little bit warmer than average. Not as warm as they have been through this summer for the UK and Ireland. The real heat is again up over Scandinavia. Very intense heat there with temperature anomalies of uh, 10 degrees above average. And many central parts of Europe as well coming out very hot. So it's not one of the hottest weeks that we've had this summer by any means. But it is still a little bit warmer than average for England and Wales anyway close to average for Scotland and Ireland. Precipitation anomalies, so quite close to average, still a bit drier than average in the southeast. Um, western and northern parts of the country coming out a little bit wetter than average. That, that is primarily down to tomorrow's rainfall, I think, and also today's uh, thundery downpours. Uh, expect those charts to train drier over the next few days. So this is how the uh, GFS is looking then for Tuesday and we find that we've got an area of low pressure up to the northwest of Scotland. We're still bringing in this relatively cool and showery west to southwest wind but through the second half of next week here comes the high pressure. It's back so by Friday yes we're back under high pressure condition conditions generally. There might be a few showers around. They might even be a little bit thundery but overall a lot of dry weather in the second half of the coming week and as as that high pressure builds, uh, so too will the heat start to build as well. So by this time next week, I reckon we'll be back to 30 degrees, 86 Fahrenheit down in the south. And then we keep this high pressure going through next weekend as well. So after a little bit of a wobble this weekend, be a barbecue, you'll be able to get them back out again next weekend. Another barbecue weekend in this summer of barbecue weekends. Uh, coming up next weekend under that area of high pressure. We're heading up to day 10 and we're still under uh, the strong ridge of high pressure. That's how things are looking by day 10 on this GFS run, which is Tuesday the 7th of August. Just pulling that ridge back into the Atlantic ever so slightly, which is just starting to allow somewhat cooler air to begin to topple around the top of the high pressure from the North Atlantic. So after a hot few days next weekend into the start of the following week by Day 10, it is actually starting to cool down a little bit. There's the upper air temperatures beginning to lower uh, from the north. Uh, the extended range of this GFS run keeps the high pressure influences going. Generally just centred a little bit out to the west of the country. So it's not in a desperately hot position on this GFS run. Still warm enough, of course. Uh, plenty of sunshine and temperatures at least into the mid 20 Celsius, I'd have thought. Uh, maybe hint it go a little bit more unsettled as we get through to the very end of the GFS run. That's as far as we can go to Monday the 13th of August. And it's possibly hint to get a bit of a breakdown uh, going on there. The high pressure looks like it's been swamped a little bit, uh, pushing Central Europe and also some sort of blocking feature close to Greenland. So this low pressure in the middle of the Atlantic looks like it's starting to swamp this high a little bit, beginning to bring back the jet stream and some energy. But it's a long way off. That's like two uh, weeks and more away. EWF churned out a very hot run, Mr. Wally, so I'll talk you through that. This is how things are looking on Tuesday, 31st of July, with low pressure out west of Scotland, still in this rather cooler and showery west to southwest the airstream. Through the second half of next week, same idea as the GFS, the high pressure comes back, we increasingly build up the ridge again, and high pressure goes back into the ascendancy, so that's how things are looking by the end of next week, Friday, uh, high pressure is back in control, it's warm, if not perhaps for the south, quite hot, dry, and mainly sunny up to that point. That's how the upper air temperatures are looking in a week's time. So the 15 Celsius ice firm is back across the southern part of the country. So temperatures have returned to 30 degrees in strong 
early August sunshine. Notice it is very, very hot indeed down across the south of France and into Spain and Portugal. Very, very intense heat there uh, coming up in towards the Bay of Biscayne. Guess what this ECM run does in its extended range? So this is to Sunday the 5th of August and then to Monday the 6th with high pressure still dominating the weather. But the heat is beginning to push northwards out of France. So that's how we end up at day 10, which is due to the 7th of August. Um, we've got a little area of low pressure. That's a thundery low, a heat low that's come out of Spain and Biscay uh, and moved up into the sun part again. So that would be bringing a threat of severe thunderstorms. But the main issue is that the temperatures have gone very, very hot indeed. Look at this. We've brought the 20 Celsius isotherm in across southern and southeastern parts of the country. That would probably be enough to lift temperatures to 100 Fahrenheit across the southeastern corner of the country. So it will be hotter than the weather that we've had over the past few days. It is at day 10. It's a hot outlier. Um, but it just goes to show that this summer is by no means done and there is still the potential to get some quite dangerous heat going uh, in the next week or two. By the time you get through the second half of August, it will become much harder to get that 20 Celsius ice firm up out of Spain and France and into the UK. But before the middle of August, so over the next two weeks, there is a potential, it may not come to anything, but the potential will be there because it's been such a hot and dry summer. Potential will be there to produce dangerous heat. We do have to watch out for it. The ECM is doing that uh, at day 10. Finally, the GM looking like this. So again, on Tuesday, it's relatively fresh and showery with those west to southwest winds. Uh, and then through the second half of next week, high pressure rebuilding, re-establishing, bringing back very warm to locally, quite hot weather down in the south, plenty of sunshine and dry weather to end next week. That high pressure sits over the country next weekend, producing a real barbecue weekend for uh, the first weekend of August. 4th and 5th of August, high pressure is in control. And then as we go into the start of the following week, so it's Monday the 6th through to day 10, which is Tuesday the 7th of August, that high pressure is slipping out to the east a little bit, which allows us to start to drag up those very hot southerly to southeasterly winds. So it's trending along similar lines with GEM to the ECMWF. There's the upper air temperatures for day 10 with the GM. And again, we have got that 20 Celsius ice firm, which is the important ice firm, but getting the temperature to like 100 Fahrenheit. That is into the south of the country. So again, that's quite a severe, dangerous heat wave that the GM is producing by day 10. Bear in mind, the GFS is nowhere near as hot as that on its latest run. Uh, but the GFS could be wrong. Equally, the ECM and the GM could be wrong. At this stage, it's too far away to say that we will get that 20 Celsius ice firm up across the country. But the point is, after such a prolonged period of very hot and dry weather, and although we have had these thunderstorms over the past 24 hours, and we'll have more general rain tomorrow, won't really be enough to truly get moisture into the ground. So as soon as this high pressure comes back at the end of the week, the ground will just dry out again, and we'll go back into this oven-like effect, where the heat can just um, keep building, kind of like in, in the way an, an, an oven would do. As the ground dries out, the air just gets hotter and drier. The ground gets drier, the air gets hotter and drier, and you get into a loop and a feedback-type uh, mechanism. So, in the next two weeks, we've got to be watching out for the chance of dangerous heat. We may not get this dangerous heat. Let's hope we don't. But the threat, the risk will be there until, like, the middle of August and then into the second half of August. Because the sun is losing its energy very rapidly then, it will become much harder to drag up that 20 Celsius ice firm. Not impossible, but it will become a lot more difficult in the second half of August to get severe heat compared to the first half of August. 
Uh, so that's what you got to date with everything. Just want to leave you with this. So we mentioned the Patreon page, Gazovin, at the start of the video. This is also the Gazovin's PayPal uh, page. So if you'd rather not become a patron, uh, but would like to give us a one-off donation, then you can do that through the Gazovin's PayPal uh, dot page. If you've been enjoying the updates over the past week, when we've been talking about the heat wave, found them interesting and informative, uh, and you would like to give us a donation, then uh, that's how you can do it from the PayPal, uh, Gazovitz PayPal page. And a big thank you to all of the patrons and donors for Gazovitz. So that's brought you up to date with everything. We've done the weekend forecast. We've had a look at all the models in terms of the next week's 10 days. And we've done a seasonal model roundup for the autumn too. I think that's pretty much everything covered uh, for today. Uh, tomorrow we will have Gazovitz Sunday roundup. I think we'll have some more to analogs, but I'm not sure. We'll uh, let you know tomorrow morning. Um, but... Uh, that's all for today. That's all for, all for now. Thanks for watching.